history will be much easier for you if you choose the right method of learning history. There are different sources of history, different types of history, different interpretations to history. But you have to rely on the most authentic source and the academic history which is relevant for your UPC examination. History, Economy, Geography, Polity, Environmental, Science, Science and Tech, Current Affairs, you know, some core areas, the main pillars when it comes to prelims examination, mains examination. Yeah, there is or there are different methods. One is like understanding the crux of the past or understanding the logic of the past and just focus on the most relevant things by letting go the irrelevant ones. That is one of the finest method of history approach. History, you know, ancient, medieval, modern, art and culture, all is important. Starting with the ancient India. Ancient India, UPSC started asking from prehistoric paintings or prehistoric culture. So it is always a safer zone to start with the prehistoric culture of India or in Indian subcontinent. Yeah, there is, you know, Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic, Chalcolithic cultures. Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic, Chalcolithic cultures. Just focus on the core points. I'm not discussing everything here, but there's some important keywords I am sharing with you. This is also an approach of understanding history through keywords. And here there is Paleolithic culture. I used some keywords here. That's a court site. This is the kind of the harder rock used by the Paleolithic men for their stone tools, for making stone tools. So they are also called quartzite men. Okay. Homo sapiens made their appearance in the upper Paleolithic age. Then uh, this culture reflected in the Sohan Valley or Belen Valley or it is in the Narmada or it is in the Bimbedaga. So different sides of Paleolithic culture important. Mesolithic is known for its microlithic industry. They started making small, very small stone tools, very small, one to eight centimeter length, small stone tools they used. And this culture is Mesolithic, a transitional culture between Paleolithic and Neolithic. Neolithic culture, which is which uh, represents the settled agriculture, the agriculture pattern started here, the settled agriculture started here, domestication of animals, you know, settled agriculture means it become common here. There are some different theories, some say towards the end of Mesolithic agriculture started, some say it started especially Tamil Nadu and Seti and all say it is a, uh, yeah, agriculture began in the Neolithic. So anyway, agriculture become popular, it practiced during Neolithic domestication of animals, then there's uh, uh, yes, uh, polished uh, stone tools, then they settled the farming, all these are some popular features. And uh, Mehargat, Pakistan, you know, that is an earliest site which is known for its earliest agriculture, okay, cultivation. Then comes the Chalcolithic culture, which is a copper, copper age culture, or maybe for the first time, the copper was the metal used here. And you see, uh, this. Uh, Yes, Kharif, Rabi crops being cultivated, different crops cultivated, cotton was, cotton was produced and uh, uh, this is known for mother goddess worship and this is known for discovery of the final fire altars indicate fire worship was also there. So uh, some basic features I shared with you which is important for UPSC, many other elements which we covered in the session in the regular session. Coming to next one which is IVC. Some keywords I share with you to study IVC quickly. This is a brown sage civilization. Yes, they had a town planning. They followed a grid pattern just like a chessboard. Okay, grid pattern of town planning. Burned bricks they used. Unlike Mesopotamian Greek or these Egyptian civilizations. Yes, this civilization used to burn the bricks extensively for this uh, house building or maybe these, uh, you know, building these various uh, like uh, structures in the cities. 
then every city was fortified city division citadel and to lower town divisions are there wheat barley some important crops they cultivated then uh, they used a script which is a bostophian script which is you know right to left left to right but it is mostly not alphabetical it is pictographical signs and symbols it is not deciphered steatite was the chief material used for the seal making one of the most sophisticated artistic work of indus people uh, some features i shared here uh, then there are some theories which you talk about the decline of this industrialization uh, yeah the climatic change theory introduced by oren strain then this ari invasion theory by mortimer wheeler then river change theory by lambrick different theories then also the civilization was called as sindan among the greeks uh, you know because they called the cotton actually sindan because cotton was produced from sindhu region so they called the cotton as a sindan then see sumerian text books talks about melua trade with melua and melua is identical with this uh, harappa or this mohenjodaro civilization indus people okay indus civilization yes so some features i shared with you then coming to this vedic age coming to vedic age different theories are there there is a central asian theory aryans are you know invaders and they came from central asia that central asian theory by max muller tibetan theory they are from tibet they migrated from tibet that theory by dayan sarasudi they are from arctic region theory by bal gangadhar tilak they are from sapta sindhu they are not from outside they are from sapta sindhu region theory by ac das then they are from himalayan food hills theory by this lishmidar there are different theories regarding this arrival of the aryans in india uh, then comes to mahajanpadas there is a popular uh, history of mahajanpadas 16 mahajanpadas greater kingdoms so you should know the monarchies and these uh, semi republican states semi republican states were also called ganas or sanghas okay they were not actually republics because even though they were run by councils councils were mostly dominated by these aristocratic classes actually there is exclusion of these uh, brahmins uh, vaishyas shudras etc so ganas or sanghas they were not actually republics in nature in character so study about the monarchies and uh, oligarchies or semi republican states and their characteristics the uh, the geographical identity of these mahajanpadas and their cultural economic relevance and of course one of them is magadha why magadha is one of the very popular mahajanpada because it was it's a strategic location you know its strategic location its uh, abundance of the natural resources minerals then this fertile soil rich produce then uh, what is called the uh, ambitious rulers then this uh, elephant to wing you know Uh, elephants were there in the army all those are some reasons for magadha why popular ruled by different dynasties haringa magadha was ruled by haringa dynasty shishunaga dynasty nanda dynasty etc last was nanda dynasty most popular was nanda dynasty last ruler of nanda dynasty was dhananda so try to cover the magadha uh, try to cover different mahajanpadas and try to cover the foreign invasions during that particular time especially persian invasion and alexander's invasions and their impacts for example karoshti script introduced to the northwest indian subcontinent as a result of this persian invasion similar way focus on the various implications impacts of persian and uh, these uh, greek invasions then you are going to the next one which is about this uh, religious reforms in ancient india religious movements in ancient india there you study jainism and this uh, buddhism in jainism different philosophies are there you heard about this uh, shaidvada or shaidvada or shaidvada philosophy that philosophy is you know the philosophy of maybe there is no absolute affirmation there is no absolute negation and all judgments are conditional all judgments are conditional that is shaidvada anegandavada is there which is the Uh, realistic pluralism the theory of uh, multi sidedness of reality okay then there is uh, uh, nyayavada is the which is you know is uh, understanding the reality by by picking the relevant things and by letting go the irrelevant things you eliminate the relevant things and understand the reality of uh, these relevant things by 
removing these irrelevant, irrelevant things. So different philosophies related to Jainism. And coming to Buddhism, Jainism, you know some differences are there. Soul concept, a soul is immortal in Jainism, but the soul is mortal in Buddhism. And in fact, there is no belief in soul theory in Buddhism. Method followed by Jainism, Buddhism different. Jainism say that is uh, austere life, extreme austere life, hardships one has to go through for achieving salvation. Extreme penance, austere life, etc. necessary for salvation in Jainism. Buddhism say follow a middle path. Okay. Now regarding the God, Jainism uh, does not completely reject this, uh, uh, you know, existence of God, but they reject creator God not completely reject this existence of God, but in Buddhism, uh, no importance to that God existence, okay? Then karma, which is a bondage in Jainism, uh, but uh, karma is uh, much more a materialistic approach. Karma is the result of your actions approach in this, more liberal interpretation to karma in Buddhism. Now, change, like Buddhism say, everything is transient, everything is subject to change. So there are some differences between Buddhism, Jainism, some striking similarities are there. Similar way, if you go for ancient India, there are Mauryan Empire, post-Mauryan Kingdoms, Gupta, post-Guptas, and the cultural life of ancient India, you have to cover them very well. Coming to medieval India, right from that particular, uh, yeah, mid of the 8th century AD, okay, mid of the 8th century AD, yes, still almost to this uh, end of this, uh, uh, or maybe uh, beginning of that uh, 18th century, you go for medieval India till the decline of the Mughal Empire. You go for medieval India, then begins the modern India, okay? And the culture strategy, two approaches are there. Either you can study culture separately or you can study culture along with this uh, history of ancient medieval modern. That's it. This series will continue. If you, if you wish to continue this, uh, you can just put your valuable comments, your feedbacks, okay, under the video. Uh, and we are happy to support you in the upcoming civil service examination, both prelims, mains, Galanda is and entire team of Galanda is there is there to support you. So feel free to send your feedback, your valuable suggestions. All the best. Thank you.